What's up YouTube? I'm going to be sharing my second concept design for one of these iShark D exam past papers. If you want to see what I did on the first concept design, go and look at my previous video. I'm currently in the process of studying and intend on sending the exam this coming July and I'm just sharing with how I approach this with the idea of creating a community where people help each other. If you disagree with anything here, feel free to drop it in the comments and I'll get back to you with uh, my opinions and hopefully other people will, will get involved in the conversation as well. So here are the architectural layouts that we're given and down below are all of the, the client requirements and the GTEC conditions and the loading, etc. I won't read that all out. Instead, I'll just go straight into how I thought about and um, yeah, came up with my second concept. And again, Remember your second concepts, they, the idea that they're, they're distinctly different from the first concept. So I've, the more I do these, the more I think um, I try and keep it as simple as possible and uh, yeah, not sort of get um, bogged down with too much detail or text. So I think you'll see that come through here. So my second concept here, where I put my description and clearly label what my lateral stability system here is a steel timber hybrid building and the lateral stability system will be a steel brace frame that I'll provide in a three of the lift cores. So this is different from my first concept, which was a uh, reinforced concrete um, flat slab building with uh, shear walls in these cores. Um, if we go and look at what I've done for the foundation, this building, noting that I'm using uh, timber as one of my uh, primary building materials, I'm expecting it to be a fair bit lighter than my uh, concrete frame buildings. So with that, I felt that the pad footings were an appropriate um, solution here with my previous footing system. They were some board piles going down into the rock. Uh, the way why did I choose to say use the, the stiff clay instead of the soft clay? I essentially just did a, a quick calc working out what the total load was on one of my typical columns based off the tributary area and the loads that they gave here. I was a bit fast and loose. I didn't sort of like split it up between all these three different loadings. I just assumed 4 kPa for each of the levels and times it by five, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Worked out what my total load was. And then my allowable bearing capacity, remember for cohesives, for a back of the envelope sort of a calc, you can just times it by two. So your allowable bearing capacity in the soft clay would be 150 kPa. I worked out what area footing I would need and that was sort of just too large. So then I went down and used the stiff clay so you get around 500 kPa allowable bearing pressure and that came up with some, yeah, 2.5 meter square footings that I could use. So that's how I sized that. And that was my thought process in terms of my foundation system where I'm using pad footings, they're different to my first concept. And I think it makes sense because this building should be lighter. And I go down into the soft clay because you get, yeah, you get more than double the, the bearing capacity so you can have some smaller footings and it's not too deep. Um, yeah, so that's what I did for the foundation system. And then we'll just get over into my sort of building geometry and grid layout. So it's a, as I mentioned before, it's a, it's a steel timber hybrid building. Uh, we might split the screen so we can see the architectural sort of layouts on the left and my uh, layouts on the right, my approach on the left. So level one is really the, the foundation plan. Here I'm just showing the columns and the pad footings underneath my columns and I've got sort of a, a raft underneath the base, underneath the, the lift bit and I just call up the, the slab on ground. So the more difficult one, and I probably spent the most amount of time sort of like coming up with this. Uh, this is my yeah, steel timber hybrid. So the way I approach this is I look at the, the grids and actually start, and I'd be interested if someone um, out there think they have sort of a, a more efficient method of coming up with concepts when you're just working off the architecturals. But I start with my primary beams and I just sort of like divide the, the length into 
what I think are sort of appropriate spans. So remember, if you're using secondary beams as well, your distance between your center to center of your primary beams are essentially what length your secondary beams have to span. So I knew that I wanted to use uh, timber as one of my uh, building materials. I decided to use steel as the, the primary beams because you know they'll be taking obviously more load than the secondary and the yeah I just felt that was uh, an appropriate solution. I'm sure you could do all timber but I yeah I kind of like the idea of a, a steel timber hybrid where the, the steel primary beams will be able to take more load and then my, my secondary beams uh, which obviously have less tributary area um, will yeah also work. So I chose my primary beams and I just spaced them at 12 meters which seemed appropriate as it, you know we've got sort of um, a 48 meter length of the building in this direction so I only need well one, two, three, four, five primary beams and then they're spanning 12 meters and I just use span on 20 for my rule of thumb and that's how I ended up with a 600 UB primary beam they're the red beam spanning left to right then after that I start laying out my secondary beams and so these are glue lamb beams and they're going to be sort of like nested within the depth of my primary beams and they'll just be simple connections um, we don't have to do any fancy detailing yet, but I would want to do that in part two of the exam. And yeah, so I'm obviously, as I mentioned before, the spacing of my primary beams obviously limits the, or governs the span of my secondary beams, but I space my secondary beams knowing how far my um, plate can span or whatever I'm using as the floor system. So here I'm using CLT and I know CLT can really only span say like six meters max and you know this just by using sort of design guides so I have spaced these out at um, what have I got here 12 meters oh sorry uh, four meter uh, center to center of my uh, secondary beams which are these uh, glue lamb beams and again I use about span on 20 for my uh, glue lamb design guide or span to depth principles so that's how I ended up with a 600 deep glue lamb beam and yeah they'll be nested within this, the depth so it's not like one sitting on top of the other and yeah that's and I pretty much and I chose four meters because yeah the CLT it's a sort of efficient distance and that fits in nicely with these two 24 meter um, lengths that we've got here where you go yeah 12 to 12 then after that I pretty much plonked in my columns and again I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible I obviously avoid putting a column in the lecture theater because that is one of the, the requirements and the other requirements is obviously the, the center to center spacing of the columns which we have to look out for and yeah the distance that I <clears throat> space the columns out I I like it when they actually line up with the secondary beams as well and 12 meters is uh, uh, for the sort of available depth that we have it felt like obviously the, the further you span the further you space out your columns the deeper your primary beam gets and we've only got a certain amount of width that or depth that we can use and that just felt like a, an efficient um, spacing of our primary beams it's not like there's just one answer out there but this is this is something that I thought is economical it looks simple you can understand the load path here so the CLT just spans one way it goes onto my my secondary beams the secondary beams are spanning onto my primary beams and then obviously primary beams onto my columns then as I've noted here, but I haven't really drawn up, I've got a uh, sort of a welded uh, hollow section um, lift shaft. So that will act as the lateral stability system. So yeah, this here is kind of what took me the most amount of time with my concept. And similar to the other concept, I split them up between the different floors. So level two, 
looks like this. So on the right hand side over here, level two, I can have sort of beams at the, the base of level two here. But then obviously when we come up to level three, that becomes a void. So that's why I show that as a void. And it's nice to have, I've got some like trimming members around the, the side of the void here. And obviously the columns don't have to step or have any transfers because I place them. I place my primary beams on either side of the uh, lecture theater. So that's what it looks like on level three. Roof framing plan, I was somewhat limited with how much I could change this. It's like you could only put six columns over what is a, a pretty large area. So it does look a bit similar to um, my first concept. I'd be interested to know, yeah, if anyone else did something drastically different, but I looked at this for a while and I came up with, I mean, the, the spacings are a little bit different, but to be honest, this is the only thing that I'm a little bit nervous about with this concept design because it, it is somewhat similar to what I did on the first concept. But the rest of it's all um, distinctly different. So then after that, again, what I've done with all the other ones, just some like neat, clear pictures which illustrate our understanding of the load paths. So <coughs> here, all I've done is here's my lift shaft and I've got some... Uh, diagonals which will take the lateral load and I'm just simply you know drawing an arrow the floors act as a diaphragm maybe it would be good to to have a note that kind of just says you know diaphragm and all I really intend on doing and I think yeah a picture speaks a thousand words I'll just be showing the compression and tension members in my diaphragm which shows how that load gets through our building, through the diaphragm and into our lateral stability system, which is my braced steel lift shaft. And yeah, watching that load get to the ground and then how the base or the, that raft slab sort of disperses it into the ground. So that is, yeah, my sketch for the lateral load path and the vertical load path is yeah very similar to what I've done in other things where I'm just showing we got sort of a, a UDL on each of our floors, um, bending moments. Uh, you could draw shears here as well. That wouldn't hurt if you could do that um, without sort of over complicating your sketch. And then, yeah, my columns obviously in compression come down into my uh, pad footings, which just disperse it over that stiff clay. And yeah, that's essentially all I'd plan on doing on showing concept two. So I've got my description, I clearly illustrate my lateral stability system, I show some foundation system, I've got my sketches which show clearly how we're sort of dancing around that lecture theatre, what we're doing at the roof, so I only have six columns, and um, yeah, a little sketch for the lateral and vertical load path to show our understanding. So then... At the end of question one, part A, it'll ask you to review and critically appraise the schemes and identify the solution you recommend. I think I'd like to have some sort of like weighted average, like a multi-criteria assessment where I say something along the lines of, you know, sustainability is say like 50% and then constructability and cost 25% uh, each and sort of come up with a, a table like that. But if... I was to, to look at these two, so up here is what I did last time with the, the flat side of concrete building and the piles. I, I would be choosing this one here because, yeah, just incorporating the, the CLT floor plates instead of uh, concrete, um, I'm expecting that to be a, a lighter system and I don't need a piling rig to do any piles, which is traditionally cheaper. So, yeah. I've got a more sustainable building through more sustainable building materials. Um, it, that should come out in my life cycle or my carbon calcs that we do in section two. Uh, I'm using pad footing, so I don't need a piling rig on site. So there's another reason that this uh, building could be considered superior to the first one. Um, yeah, they're the two main reasons. And... Yeah, that's what I got. 